Hey, Tom, what's up? How are you? I am good. Uh, uh, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I feel like this is our um, semi-annual quarantine check-in because the last uh-huh. time I saw you was about two months ago. That's what I thought. I was like, didn't we just talk? I know. We kind of did just talk, but it's, it's always great to see you. Um, so what's been just going on over the last couple of months for you? Ah, uh, um, lots of stuff. Uh, well, the big news was the Senate Intelligence, uh, the Select Committee on Intelligence released um, language for um, basically uh, grabbing all the information and, and having them be accountable up through a, an interagency task force that, that reports directly to the U.S. Senate um, Intelligence Committee. So that's a big deal. That's something that me and my team did at our company to the stars. And that's, you know, this is, these are the steps that you, you take to get to disclosure um, yeah. So that's a big, it's a big deal. I mean, to, yeah. to finally get Congress briefed and enacting like national security language. I mean, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah. Cause I think the last time that you and I talked, uh, that was just when uh, the Pentagon and the DOD had actually confirmed those videos that your company to the stars put out with the UFOs. And um, so it seems like a lot of kind of progress is, is being made in that direction. Yeah. Um, there is. And there's a lot of uh, things that are happening even behind the scenes that we can't talk about. So I think, you know, people just, it, it's a big deal. I mean, I, I, there's a lot of people that I remember, like they thought I was like, I lost mine because I stopped playing and blink and then like went chasing um, spaceships. But if you look at the stuff that came out with the Senate last week, uh, then you understand why <laughs> like I'm doing what I'm doing. And, you know, uh, but you know, to the stars is not a UFO research group. It's, you got three divisions and there's, you know, there's entertainment that's informed science fiction. That's no different than like Disney and the, when the way it operates much smaller, obviously, but um, Disney's gargantuan. It's like saying my band is no different than the Beatles, you know, it's like no <laughs> different at all, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but in any case, it's, it's, it's a lot of people don't understand how it works. It's, there's some places that just make movies, some places that just, you know, publish books, some people that just make comic book, whatever. We kind of do it all, you know, um, you know, and then we also have a science division and we built an artificial intelligence system and that's doing a lot of different stuff. And then we also have an aerospace division that has, um, a lot on its plate, uh, that are, you know, especially like technologies that are, you know, like advanced propulsion and, uh, looking at different things, dealing with how these things fly and how to bring that out to the world. So, you know, but, you know, the core of, of a lot of the people in there was really about how to exploit disclosure because it's coming. And that's the technology and it's kind of like the history of who we are and where we're going, but it's also how do we tell people about it and how do we get people to understand? Cause it's, it's complicated, you know? So, uh, but we do a lot of stuff there too, that has nothing to do with UFO. I mean, like we're making animations and movies about dreams and cool shit, you know? So we, we do a lot. That's my update. Yeah. Sorry. Absolutely. Well, that's so awesome. And you know, I think, um, <laughs> I kind of feel like a lot of people have sort of come around to the idea of other life forms existing, that it's probably a very small chance that we're the only ones that are here. And, uh, you know, I kind of thought like with the release of, you know, or the confirmation from the DOD and the Pentagon of aliens, you know, and UFOs, it, it just seemed like people didn't really freak out that much, you know? No, I know. It's, I think we've all been prepared. We all suspected it. I think the people that freak out are the ones that stop, take a deep breath and kind of going, okay, you know, like what's, who's inside those things or who sent those things or what are those things? And what, you know, that's, that's, that's when people tend to have a little bit of a, of a gut check because, you know, that, that's what the government's been afraid of is when people will literally digest the fact that there are things here that are so advanced technologically um, that there's not much we can do about it, you know, but, um, you know, but, I, but it's going to like, you know, everything going on in the world right now where everything is like, feels like the apocalypse in many ways. It can't, it's not as bad as World War II. Imagine World War II where your whole city is getting bombed and all that. I mean, I couldn't even imagine. So right now we're, we're dealing with the fact that we can't go to concerts and like movies and stuff. But um, so I guess we don't have much to complain about, but I think it feels really bad to a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people that can't even provide for the family getting kicked out of their houses and, and all, or might even dying, you know, because maybe they had, you know, the compromised immune system or whatever. But I think so a, a subject like this, provides an enormous amount of hope because it lets us know that we're actually all connected, that we're all related, 
that, you know, that maybe things that have happened in world events that have happened um, that have gotten us to this point might not be as they see, might have been for different reasons. And I think that'll eventually bring us together and identify, like, how do we take care of ourselves? How do we take care of our planet? You know, and what are the technologies that will really propel us past this, this kind of barrier that, that we're stuck against? We keep hitting the wall, pollution and producing too many products and, you know, too materialistic and too weirded out with belief systems and fighting wars over arguments that's been going on for thousands of years over things people just don't know, you know? So um, I'm kind of thinking that this, this confirmation is, uh, could not come soon enough. Yeah. And I like that you kind of touched on, you know, like hope. It seems like we kind of had a globally shared trauma and experience uh-huh. like with being not only being in the quarantine, but I think everything that happened with like the Black Lives Matter movement and just people awakening to the actual like social injustices that are still happening after so long and that, you know, these old paradigms need to be broken and um, just seeing all of the millions of people that have come together for peaceful protests and the the movements that are being made. I, I think for me, it's, you know, it can be overwhelming and a little bit heavy, but also it's giving me a lot of hope because I think there are so many people out there who just want to help and do good. Well, I also, I think people need to look at right now. It's like having a toddler that throws a temper tantrum, you know, like a parent tends to go, Oh, I'm stronger and bigger. And I'm going to grab you by the arm and you're going to do what I say and stop screaming and target, you know, but uh, (laughs) um, that's a lot of kind of what's going on. People are angry and the temper tantrum, the analogy is like, you know, there's riots and there's anger and there's, you know, this and that. And then there's an authoritarian parent, like you will not do this and we will tear gas you, you know, but really I think what it provides is the same thing that, like you said, when you have a child and a parent where after the whole episode goes down and screaming and the yelling and all that kind of stuff, you can sit down and go, what did I do that hurt you? And what is it you want? And you can usually, if you're a good parent, you have that conversation and you, and you evolve, you know? So I'm hopeful that, um, you know, and by the way, I should throw this out here. Like, this isn't like, I'm not saying that um, racism is a temper tantrum. I just realized that when celebrities say anything, uh, not that I'm a celebrity, sorry, that's even a bad word, but whenever people say, you know, a celebrity, Tom. <laughs> uh, well, I don't, I don't know, but, but, uh, the kind of very tiny, but in any case, it's, that's not, that wasn't my point. My point was when people can't take it anymore and they have to emote, um, and it's no different than a, and then the authoritarian kind of version came in with the police and everything. But my hope is that just like a parent and a child, um, where a child feels controlled and manipulated, or whatever, but, you know, the parent government can evolve, you know, the generation beyond us can evolve, you know, because the younger generation, they won't stand for it anymore. And that's where the change comes, you know, in the sixties is the same thing. And, um, you know, it's exciting to have change that pulls people together. We all want it so bad. Some people don't, but hopefully we'll be uh, kicking them by the ass out of, out of town, you know? Um, yeah. We're done. Have- we're done. We're yeah. all, I, everyone's so done with hate and racism and war and poverty. And I said, we're fucking done, you know? I'm like, I want to move to Denmark. I keep talking about it every day, <laughs> you know? Like, you'd, like, I was watching this show on Denmark and these moms were like, we don't, like, worry that there's going to be a shootout at our kid's school. We don't worry that some rapist is going to come steal our kid off the street. When we lose a job, we don't worry because our government takes super good care of us if we lose a job and they help us find another one. We don't worry about health because everyone gets health care for free, you know. Uh, you know, so there's all the, and we have bike paths. We ride bicycles everywhere. I was like, oh, sounds so nice. Right? Just a, yeah, completely um, different way of living that absolutely makes sense. And we have an example right there. It would be nice if we, uh, you know, could – follow maybe make some changes you know just hey i'm just pointing out denmark that's all i'm doing i have no idea what if it's like the worst place ever i don't know anything bad about it. maybe the maybe the food sucks it's like you get there but yeah they, they have don't have tacos uh i'm sure i've been to copenhagen right isn't that the main place i've been there before i i, I can't tell you that i remember it. they all blur together to me yeah, like that whole right? scandinavia region <laughs> don't really know yeah. well i definitely feel like um all that's left is love you couldn't have put it out at a more perfect time. Came out a couple months ago. Uh, you just put out uh, the official video for it. And I want to be kind of cheesy because you put this quote at the beginning of the video. And it's a quote, and it says, We never appreciate the connection we have with others until it's gone. 
And although we may not be able to change the first part of the story, we can for sure change the, the ending. And I just think that that is such a cool quote. And I was just wondering, like, what kind of inspired that? Or if you just want to kind of expand on that a little bit. Well, I think, you know, the, the, what people need to realize um, is that, you know, these events that happen are not the definition of who we are, where we're going and where we end up. You know, every time something bad happens, you have a choice to either wallow in that crisis or you use it as an opportunity to evolve spiritually. And um, the whole thing that's happening right now, I think people really are evolving spiritually in their own way in a lot of different ways. You know, for some people, it's like, man, maybe I was working too much and wasn't with my family. Other people might be, I wasn't going on walks enough because that's all you can do. Like, well, walks with nature and shit, whatever it might be. Um, I think that the opportunity here is for us to is to look why everything bad that's happened in my life, every single thing, no matter how horrible it was, led to something good as a lesson. Everything, and and I think anybody can look back. Like you had the best job in the world, and then you got laid off, and you lost your apartment. And you got like everything went south. You know, like it was like the worst time ever. But if but what it will do for you that moment of clarity is you'll probably look back and go yeah but then I got like this weird consulting gig doing you know makeup and now I'm doing makeup on movies and it's like the best thing ever I, I don't know how I, you know, I can choose my own schedule you know so everything will will lead to something else that's better no matter how bad it is and I think that people get lost in that this is the problem with us as people like losing touch with who we are as human beings, not like I, I, this is the thing, like people are very kind of focused on our life. Like I'm on, I go to job, I, I'm in the freeway on traffic and I go to the movies and I go to concerts on weekends or whatever. Um, but that's not who we are and why we're here. You know, there's, there is a unified consciousness. We don't know much about it. They've proven it exists because they even use these tools in the U S government when they have psychics that are meditating and they can pull out information past, present, future, there is a unified mind and everyone's connected to it. So you got to stop thinking that your mind exists in, in your head. You're, this is just a receiver. Yeah. I think um, meditation has been so important for me personally, especially during this time, because it's like you said, everything externally that we thought made us us was taken away. So then we're just left with like, who am I? How do I feel about myself? What am I putting out into the world? What do I want to do with my future? You know, and I know for me, like I get anxiety a lot. So meditation has been something that, you know, has, has always just really helped me. And I just always feel more calm and in tune whenever I'm doing that. So I'm really like happy to hear you um, talking about that, you know, and just putting that out in the world. That's why I always love talking to you. You just, you keep it real, you know? Well, well, I know it's funny. It's like a, it, meditation, calming down anxiety and all these different things is so on point. Uh, people don't understand that consciousness, um, you know, can manipulate and affect matter. So when you meditate, you can calm all, all your emotions down. You can calm your heartbeat down. You can get rid of the anxiety. You can do a lot of different things. Um, but it, but it, just to give you another idea of what the same meditation does, there was a physicist working on um, – the UFO program at the Department of Defense. And when early on decades ago, when they were looking into all the anti-gravity stuff, what they didn't understand was their original early calculations was that it took an enormous amount of power to cancel gravity. I mean, like taking this power of the, stu the sun or something, you know, whatever it might've been, it might not be the case now, but just back then. But then they had these guys that were meditating in the Middle East that were levitating with no engine, no spaceship, you know, like literally just their mind. So they're, they're like, how does consciousness affect matter? Because all we know is we have to build an engine and it has to be antimatter or nuclear power. And we got to do these crazy frequencies and we got to, you know, but then there's this guy that's just meditating and it does it. So the point is it's a consciousness thing. You know, it's, there's something there that, um, that can do the same thing that we think we need the power of a star or something to do. Um, but that just goes along with the fact that, um, you know, meditation can control physical matter, can control the matter of your body because you are not your body, you know, like you're, you're a soul that's connected to something much bigger. Yeah. But you're in this physical to learn and to weave and to bump into people. So, yeah, we have, I that's think it. that's my speech. 
We have so much more power than we give ourselves credit for, you know, with what we're able to do with our minds. Um, and then, and I do want to, you know, talk to you about uh, the Angels and Airwaves album, which I know you've been working hard yep. at. I think I saw um, maybe an Instagram story on uh, Elon's Instagram where you guys were kind of doing arrangements and finishing touches. So what's, what's up with the new album? We just started arranging our very last song on um, uh, this week, and uh, and it, and it's like basically the way we do things is people kind of keep going. You keep saying you're almost done, or it's how come it's taking so long? Well, what what I do that's different than what I used to do. We used to like a blink. We would like I would write a song on acoustic guitar, then I would sit with Mark, and we would he would learn it, and uh, or vice versa, he would write something, whatever. But we would kind of figure it out together after the fact. And then we would go and sit with Travis and go, what do you think? And then we'd change it some more and then learn it all together. And then the third, the third step would be going in the studio and recording it exactly that way. Um, that's not how it works anymore because recording has changed so much over the past couple of decades. Like now I spend a year um, like just creating and arranging and moving things around, flipping sounds, trying a new chord, constantly like, it's like a painting that you're like coming one day go I don't like the blue but it's really easy to select the blue and move it out and put in purple <laughs> you know so it's like that kind of thing and so that's the longest process but to get down and actually go okay we love this this is what we're doing let's record it that takes like two weeks you know to redo the tracks to where they're like the ones you want to keep that sound really good because right now we don't spend a lot of time we'll just like record a guitar and then we're like okay it's good enough it sounds like a guitar you know but later we will okay now let's craft the tone that we want which is a little bit more time um but in any case we are we are within like two and a half weeks from starting that tracking process so uh um, we are very close, you know, super close. And by the way, there's something that comes with this um, album that I can't say. <laughs> that's a really, that's a really big deal. And it's, um, it's, it's, it's the most ambitious like thing that I've done yet. So I, I, uh, I'm really excited about it. Like, this is what this band's for. It's like we're trying to do things that people can't, they don't expect, you know, and, and they're like, wow, wow, that's cool. It's cool. You, you really put that much effort into doing something that, that has, you know, has something in it that's touching. So. Yeah. Well, I think you give your fans a really like an experience and, you know, just it's, it's, um, I think it's a way to like be able to, that's bond. The goal. that is the goal. It'd be a bad experience, yeah. but we're trying. Absolutely. So are, do you think you're going to be dropping a new single anytime soon as well? Um, yes, but I'm probably, It'll be like, um, um, it's a few months away because we're going to finish this all up and then start mixing. So where are we, July, August? We'll be mixing in August, September. So I could see the new thing coming by October. Awesome. Maybe, maybe I'll see. I'll probably, but it's going to be in that zone. Yeah. Also, just want to touch on uh, season two of Unidentified, which is coming out July 11th. Yeah, so the first uh, season, so for people that don't know, I have a show on the History Channel that follows uh, of all of my partners at my company, To The Stars Academy, um, and all the kind of government work that we do. And we're, so we focused on the first season was a lot about like who we are, how we came together, and then getting the briefings for the first time in like 70 years over to the Houses of Congress. And, um, and then also being brought into uh, certain governments, um, like Italy and th them talking about their UFO issues and program. I mean, so the first season is pretty kick-ass. The second season, um, it, rather than focusing on just like one or two incidents, there's like 30. And we had so many people from the government come forward um, over decades of things that have happened. I mean, uh, I, it, it's, it's like a quantum leap um, as well as uh, incorporating the recent events with the Senate. So I think uh, what people are hoping to get out of this show uh on the second season it's we're going to surpass those expectations so I'm, I'm really excited yeah yeah i'm excited to watch it's such a great show it's so well done so, but I, I didn't even realize till this morning i was searching around and i was like oh the, the new season's coming out so it's coming yeah, yeah in the next couple of weeks i forgot the date they I told think me it's here. july 11th yeah july 11th yeah oh shit, yeah. that's like soon that's soon, like next week 
I know. Um, and then I wanted to ask you, we're celebrating 100 years of radio. So how has radio impacted your life and your career? I remember um, early on where I was staring at this radio, listening to it, listening to the DJs, listening to music. And I heard, I literally heard Blink 180s 2 type sound coming from the radio, like the guitar riffs and the fast pace and the melodies. And um, that's how I came up with the sound of Blink was by listening to the radio and then somehow I zone out and go, wouldn't it be cool if this type of sound was coming from the radio? Isn't that weird? It's kind of weird. That's amazing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I love Supernatural. it. Supernatural. Supernatural <laughs> stuff. You wouldn't get it. It's really hard for people to get it. <laughs> but it really just, just it shows the power of radio. And, um, you know, I think the cool part about it is that we're all experiencing the same sounds at the same time, you know? Yep. And um, it just, it's a, a sense of community and bringing us all together, you know? Well, I used to say that uh, on the last Angels tour, I said that every night before one, one specific song because uh, there really was this scientific experiment where they found out that everyone that listens to the same music at a concert, your brains map up together Yes. with the artist, you know? And I, I thought that was really interesting. And, I, and that happens whether you're radio or at a concert or at a baseball game, you know, when everyone, that's the idea of a ritual. That's why so many religious, you know, leaders in the Adolf Hitler and so many people you, you, with mass consciousness. It's a big deal. You know, so the, the question is, is what do you want the masses to focus on love or something else, you know? So, uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, we learn this and we use it to our advantage. I mean, it goes all the way back to Native Americans doing rain dancing, you know, and they somehow it worked. Well, well, why did it work? Because groups of people that meditate or focus or map up with each other can, can literally influence the weather, people's emotion. Uh, they can move objects with their mind, but they can do all different types of things. Uh, they can levitate when meditating, like I told you earlier. Like, that's just the way consciousness works. It's not a vacuum. It's a fabric. And the fabric connects everything. So people need to know that. I'm trying to tell people. They won't I listen. I go out. There's people mowing lawns down the street. They won't listen to me. I, I stop. I said, look, I got to tell you about this meditating, <laughs> levitating guy. <laughs> meditating, levit meditating, levitating. <laughs> well, yeah. Tom Long, you are just, you're on the level. I always, I love talking to you because, uh, you know, it just gets real and it's, it's cool to be able to talk about this stuff and put it out into the universe. And I think a lot of people, uh, you know, they're on the level too and they feel it. So I think um, so too, especially yeah. like your age group and younger, like it's, it's like known in the heart way stronger than it is like in in everyone in my age group or my parents you know it, it, we're getting better we're getting yeah. better you know um so we just gotta we gotta keep 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 on that track yeah keep putting all the love you know out into the world and uh very much looking forward to the new angels and airwaves <laughs> album and everybody should go uh actually one of one of the best albums of my life, if not the best album I've ever done in 25 years. I'm telling you, this record, I'm so excited for people to hear it. I'm so excited, too. All That's Left Is Love is the latest single, and uh, you guys should all go buy it um, because the proceeds are going to Feeding America's COVID-19 Response Fund, which is incredible. And uh, Tom, I just want to thank you so much for hanging out and talking with me. And it's just this was really great. So thank you so much. Hey, thank you, too. And uh, or thank you as well. Thank you, too. I don't know. Can you, you say thank you, too? Does that make sense? Thank you, too? It's weird. All right. We'll talk again soon. Awesome. Bye, Tom. All right. So now we are going to check out the HD Radio Sound Space performance with Angels and Airwaves from October. So let's do it.
Lord of Clue Well, every little kiss and grin you give Is just a little bullshit I saw through The alcohol scented with your breath You're always old enough to just be used I'm waiting for excuses that deceive I'll meet you in the back to see them through
different when we come and play a small little place like this. All big flashing lights, but it's so intimate. This is so fun. This is usually where I tell the audience some cool shit about science. Stuff about the brain and the spirit and the soul. It's what it means to be human. It's going to be very important within the next couple of years. Remember this. There's something you said, a whirlwind of voice Together you said, and I have no choice, no please Stay a while, you gotta love your smile Never felt alone, and here it feels like hell When I'm on my
just drinking urine from a different species. song. Tiny, quiet little song. You'll feel it in your loins. <laughs>
living on a curse, lost in desire, love your touch. I cannot hurt, and I cannot cry, I cannot, not numb. Don't say it, don't, don't say it loud. Say it, don't, don't say it now.
you guys. This will be our last song today. Thank you so much for bearing with us. Um, the tour is done in just a few days and we're back home. It's a big deal for us, we have families and stuff. But I want to invite each and every one of you into my bedroom so we can cuddle and just talk about how the tour went. I want to thank K-Rock for supporting Angels and Airwaves, letting us come out and see you guys. I'm gonna need your help singing this one, but it goes like this. so much for hanging out with us and watching that performance with Tom DeLong from our HD Radio Sound Space back in October. And I hope you'll join us again next Sunday for our HD Radio Sound Space Sundays at 6 p.m. Sending you so much love.